guys, it is that time once again for another edition of Odds and Ants, where I read you some really weird news stories from all over the world, and, well, they don't call it Odds and Ants for a reason, you know? So I apologize for it being a, just one day late, just one day late. But, so I have the source right here, I'm ready, and if you guys are, let's begin. Our first story comes out of Bolarius. After weeks of sturdiest denial, Bolarius... Regime President Alexander Lukashenko, often referred to as Europe's quote last dictator, admitted that his nation was in fact invaded by an army of cuddly teddy bears. Swedish news agency The Local has reported that on July 4th, a Swedish plane entered Belarus airspace and dropped 897 teddy bears wearing tiny black parachutes over the town of Inventness outside the capital city of Minsk. The bears carried signs reading, quote, Belarius freedom, and, quote, we support the Belarius struggle for free speech. The stunt was mounted by a Swedish ad agency on behalf of the pro-democracy group Chapter 97. Belarius's hardline leader, however, spent nearly a month denying the extents of the fuzzy freedom fighters. Government-controlled media called the story, quote, invented. A, journalist, a journalism student who posted on his personal website pictures of the teddy bears dangling from trees was arrested and faces up to seven years in prison for, quote, assisting border violators. Last week, however, Lukash, Lukashenko, Lukash, Lukashenko ended the cover-up. He called a meeting and fired the nation's air defense commander and the chairman of the state border committee. Quote, how do you explain the provocation with the airplane that only crossed our borders but entered the territory of Belarus unpunished, uh, said Lukashenko, according to, the, it's quote, according to a press release on the government's website. Quote, what did, was this the stupidity of specific actors or system mistakes in the defense of the airspace? Pilots of the single engine propeller plane acknowledged the quote, calculated risk of their stunt and expected to be forced down by military jets. Instead, they spent about an hour and 20 minutes inside Belarus airspace and returned the bordering Lithuania unharmed. Analysts says, uh, analysts say Lukashenko, Lukash, Lukashenko, Lukashenko. I don't know why I'm screwing that up. His anger was fueled by reports that Russia, which helped build Belarus's air defense system is furious over the lapse in security. God, I cannot do this right for once, but anyway, so here's the picture. I don't know if you guys can see that. That is the picture of what they were doing. But anyway, so why do you fire a guy when he doesn't do his job and just uh, they just let planes fly by? It's a mistake, okay? doesn't mean you have to like start firing people just because they didn't do their job right. Well, I mean, he's a little harsh and they're demanding freedom of speech, so I can understand where that's coming from. <sighs> Sorry about that. Moving on, our next story comes out of Scotland. Comes out of Scotland. I know I'm saying it with the worst accent in the world, but comes out of Scotland. Through its product is not clearly is clearly not endorsed by International Olympic Committee, a Scottish brewery has jumped on the Olympic bandwagon by producing a beer called Nevermind the Anabolics, which contains eight illegal performance-enhancing ingredients. Brewdog Microbrewery in Fassenberg says the limited edition beer is designed to, quote, undermine global sponsorship for the L London Olympics. According to the microbrewery's website, burgers and cans of fizzy pop, quote, are not the most ideal preparation for the steeple chase or the dressage. The company's new India Pale Ale contains gratini, guarana, goji, berry, goji berries, kola nut, ginkgo, matach tea, and maca powder, all of which are banned for professional athletes. Quote, it seems a beer laced with performance enhancing ingredients isn't actually illegal, but it is definitely frowned upon, said James Watt, co founder of Brewdog. Quote, this is the craft beer community showing 
the sponsors of the games, the finger, the sponsor of sh the games, the finger, in the best way we know how. A percentage of the profits from the company's latest craft brew will go to help purchase a new surfboard for a quote championship surfing dog named Abby. Okay, uh, you're putting all these ingredients in a beer and uh, whatever. <laughs> You know, some of these ingredients is not usually, un it's not common for it to show up in a beer though, but. So they're pretty much just saying, okay, here you go, we're going to make this beer anyway. That's basically what they're saying. And in case you guys want to see what it looks like, it's right there. That little bottle, in case you guys are looking for it, that's what it looks, that, that is what it looks like. So, now you have an idea what to look for if you guys are drinkers. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Our next story comes out of Pennsylvania, where a Pittsburgh man is charged with breaking into a woman's apartment, stealing a potato peeler, a kitchen knife, and a small dog. Police in the borough of Coropolis say a woman called 911 around 3 a.m. to report that a man had just kicked in her apartment door, snatched two utensils out of her dishwasher, picked up her dog, and left. A neighbor heard what was going on and briefly struggled with the intruder. Police arrived and found 24-year-old 20, suspect, <coughs> excuse me, Garrett Stuba, sitting shirtless on a couch in his friend's apartment. Stuber was apparently staying in the same apartment located in the same building as the victims. According to the police report, Stuber was drunk. He faces a preliminary hearing later this month. Okay, if you're at a friend's house and your friend is drunk, you keep an eye on him. Because if he comes home with potato peeler, kitchen knife, and a small dog, something is obviously going on and something happened, therefore you should have done a better job of watching over him. But, oh well. Whatever. Moving on, our last story comes out of Minnesota, where the world's largest bikini parade fell more than a little short of the record when virtually no one showed up in the appropriate attire. The event had been organized in the southern Minnesota town of Madison Lake as part of the annual Paddlefish Days Parade. A majority of the town's city council opposed the event saying it was quote, inconsistent with the festival's family-oriented nature. When it became clear that they would have far less than the 451 swim swimwear clad walkers needed to break the Guinness World Record, Organizers told participants they could wear shorts over their bikini bottoms. Even so, the Free Press in Mankato estimated only 39 people participated. Organizer Cynthia Frederick isn't giving up. Although she is moving towns, quote, We've been invited to Eagle Lake to march next year in their Tater Days Parade, quote, she told the Free Press. Okay. There is nothing wrong with wearing your bikini in public. Everybody wears, mostly women, I don't know why I said everybody, but everyone mostly wears swimwear out in public, and hence you want to protect the children by shielding their eyes. 451 women in bikinis. That is a lot. Therefore, you shouldn't get all rowdy and upset about it. Therefore, and uh, I don't know why you guys are actually getting all upset about it because, like I said, it's just clothing that's not there. But still, I don't know why you guys are getting all upset about it because it's a bikini. It's covering the woman's body in the right places and therefore you shouldn't really give a shit. But apparently it's all about reputation, blah, blah, blah. Screw you guys. That's all I got to say. So anyways, guys, that is it for this edition of Odds and Ends. And I really hope you guys enjoyed listening to those stories. I so, like reading them to you. And I apologize for the inconsistent screw up and whatnot. Because I don't know what's going on through me. I'm like hot as hell right now. And uh, I cannot read for squat right now. But I'm guessing it's... The day after, and I'm really not focusing in as much, so, but, so I just wanted to apologize in advance, but, um, so anyways, guys, that is it, and we will see you next time for another edition, and until then, see you guys later.